This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is our public affairs show here at Amherst Media. And uh, we have the assistance of uh, Adrian Terizzi from our League of Women Voters as we form our programs, plus the staff here, Faith and Jim and a whole bunch of other people here in the studio. Uh, so uh, as you remember, this is our uh, weekly or bi-weekly show now. We're actually doing it bi-weekly uh, to uh, provide you information about what's happening with our town government as we transition from the old system, which is now feeling older and older as our new government is settling in. And today we have our uh, city uh, town councilor, I guess we still call it town councilors here in town. Right. Town councilor Kathy Shane, and we have Julie Johnson, a familiar face in this community, uh, connected to the Hitchcock Center. If I remember, if I remember yesterday you said you were approaching a number, a second decade of full service yes, around, terrific. so that's, yeah, that's, terrific. that's really great. Thank so you. we're going to talk a little bit about uh, arts-related stuff today. And by the way, I'm not sure whether the last show I recorded is going to be on before or after this, but you're going to see two shows in a row, I think, that both tie into arts and culture here in Amherst, which is really interesting. It was not planned, but it's really uh, fortuitous um, uh, because there's a lot of cultural activity going on here in the community, and it contributes in so many different ways to the life of the community. So let's start with percent for the arts. So Kathy, tell us what percent for the arts means and uh, what's going on at the town council on that subject. Okay, we have a new bylaw that we're going to be bringing to the town council, uh, not this Monday, but February 24th. So anyone who wants to tune into that discussion, Bill Kazin, who is chair of the Public Art Commission, will be doing a visual. And this bylaw, uh, I chaired a subcommittee, an ad hoc committee on revising one, would take 0.5% of large new building projects, so large meaning at least a million dollars, and dedicate it to an, a work of art. Mm -hmm. And we would be vetting that with both the users of the building, if it's a building, and try to integrate it at least in concept or with the overall structure. It might be attached to the building, it might be next to its sculpture, but it would be a uh, uh, the goal would be both art and culture, but also bring people downtown, bring people to the building to want to see and visit it and use it um, with a thing of beauty or of interest. So this, um, if town council accepts it, as I said, that we'll be voting on, would affect only the major projects, but we mm -hmm. have some big buildings scheduled to be on the horizon over the next several years. So we would be seeking public input. There would be public hearings with an overall plan. Um, mm -hmm. It was qu quite exciting because we haven't had this way of funding something which could be a significant piece of art. We could put the competition out internationally if we wanted to for we're interested in getting ideas mm -hmm. like the following. So let's give people a sense of scale by numbers. So if it's a million dollar project, how much public art are we going to, how much are we going to spend on public art in that structure? $5,000. 5000 And if it's a million, uh, $10 million? Uh, 50000 And if it's $10 million? You know what, t 10 you just did, but you know, double it, you know, so it, it does keep up. If it's $20 million, then it's 100000 Okay. So one of the ways we've... Uh, Is there a cap? There's no cap on it, um, okay. so the 0.5. But so if we built a $150 million building, it would be 0.5%. It would be up to. Um, the, the likelihood of Amherst doing that yes. is not probably in our <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> uh, that's more a New York City building. Yes. But the idea is that it would be up to that amount. Yeah. And because it's tied to the overall construction, we can go out and be uh, paying for this as part of a big project. Mm -hmm. So it can be paid back in 20 or 30 years. Right. So what looks like $50,000 is much smaller on an annual basis right. as a draw mm -hmm. on our capital. So it makes it much more affordable mm -hmm. to spread it out that yeah. way. And this is how other cities we found who do this. They so in most cases, we're talking tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. And occasionally it might hit 
uh, 100,000 or a little bit more, but it would be right. hard and to get there. Again, not all at once. Not so all even at once, if you yeah. took 100,000 and did it over 30 years, you're not talking about right. very much each year. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it would be an up to to pay for the idea, the artist doing the art work and yeah. installation. And this is visual arts? It would all be visual, yep. Okay. So could you imagine a uh, video artist? Uh, Potentially, but but I think what we've been thinking and more objects. We've been thinking more objects and artwork that wouldn't necessarily require a lot of maintenance. maintenance okay. We would like it to. So it could be a sculpture. It could be a mural. It could be tile work. It, you know, in uh, in some cities, what I've seen um, is a creative. Again, is if you're doing it with the construction project design, a cutout of a side of a building which has an amazing place to sit. That's got, mm -hmm. you know, some creative cement work that's very interesting, you know. In, so it could in be utilitarian air. as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I think of Amherst as, you know, we've got dinosaur tracks everywhere. So <laughs> would we, you know, near an elementary school, build in a theme that's local mm -hmm. to us, or mm -hmm. Carl Museum kinds of mm -hmm. things. So it, I think we could be extremely creative because we'd be wide open to ideas once we decide, is it a mural, is it physical? Um, and, and you mentioned other cities, so we wouldn't be alone in doing this. No, there are cities all over the country that are doing this. Okay. So Often with not... much, 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 much bigger budgets, but yes, there are lots of cities okay. doing it. And so we're not creating the wheel here, we're not inventing the wheel, and we wouldn't be, you know, the first, even in Massachusetts, to do this. I do, I th we are not the first, but I believe, and I haven't double checked this, Cambridge was the first, and I'm not sure there are many others than mm -hmm. Cambridge. And Cambridge, just by the nature of it, is. Yeah, we had a state uh, program at one time, yeah. and we lost it in one of the recessions and we've been fighting to get it back. So uh, it's, it's been unfortunate, but we've not been able to get, get it back. Because you think about the number and scale of buildings that the state builds, Absolutely. we could be um, creating some. You think of what uh, Springfield could look right. like if some of those state buildings had, right. had someone right. thinking creatively yeah. on them. And so we're going to come back and talk a little bit more, because public art is actually already in Amherst. This is just another thing. But we'll come back to that in a second. Julie, I just sure. want to get the conversation started with you about uh, a program that the Hitchcock Center is involved in, and it's not the only one in Amherst, as I recall. Yep. But uh, tell us about this program that you're working on with the um, Cultural Council uh, for the Commonwealth. Yeah, so, well, as, as we know, we live in a, a state that is a very rich in cultural and arts uh, organizations, and uh, the Mass Cultural Council is a state funding agency that has um, been supporting many of those organizations to create uh, greater access and uh, a richer cultural life for people. And uh, in 2017, they, uh, they opened up a, a new partnership with the State Department of uh, Transitional Assistance. And so that anybody who had an EBT card through that department, anybody who's receiving EBT finance. is a food stamp card, it's basically. It's an electronic benefits transfer. Mm -hmm. They get financial assistance for a lot of different things. So it's for okay. low-income people um, who are working with that department. Um, they get an EBT card um, that, that um, identifies them as a participant in that program. And through the partnership with the uh, Mass Cultural Council, uh, what that card now does is that um, any organization that currently receives funding with the Mass Cultural Council uh, voluntarily uh, registers to accept that card and as a result offer a benefit that dramatically reduces or offers free admission to our cultural institutions uh, so that it is to break down barriers to access to the arts and to culture. And so organizations like the Hitchcock Center, um, and there are, I think, 130 different organizations across the state, the Hitchcock Center being one. We were uh, the first to register, among the first to register for that program in 2017. We offer free membership um, to anybody who holds that card, and then that gets them discounted programs, um, and also it 
uh, gives them automatic eligibility for scholarships for our summer camp programs. Mm -hmm. So since the opening of that program, we've served about 40 different households, maybe 120 yeah, that's um, that's true. family yeah. members yeah. and individuals, and they've been able to participate in about 104 programs over the course of the last three, three, three and a half so. years. Yeah. And so the event that just um, that we were part of launching with Mass Cultural Council this past month was they've added a new partner to that program, and it's the Department of the um, Massachusetts Connecticut Connecticut Connector, the Connector, Connector um, Health Program. Okay. And so they have now uh, anybody who has affordable health care through that program, they're part of the connector care card to culture, just like the EBT card to culture. Mm -hmm. And it opens up even more access. So mm -hmm. anybody who has that card also can have free access to a lot more cultural so events. So this provides a lot of opportunity for low-income people who uh, may have a desire but not the means to be able to participate in these programs. Exactly. And uh, I think it's interesting because the Hitchcock Center, which has been in town for many, many, many years, uh, is a, um, uh, it's a real institution here. It's an environmental center. Right. We don't think of it as a, a cultural, cultural, but if you think about in a broader sense, uh, the, the natural environment is filled with the elements that relate to culture and life exactly. as well. And uh, Kathy mentioned uh, dinosaur tracks a few minutes ago. Right, right. And so here, the arts are thinking, well, dinosaur, tra dinosaur tracks are part of our culture. Well, it's also part of the scientific culture yeah. of, of our Yeah, culture community. is such an interesting word because it's really about, you know, people who share a common value, beliefs, and, uh, and language and, and place, exactly. And so our natural heritage is as much of our culture as uh, our, our artistic, you know, uh, representation of our culture mm -hmm. and so forth. So it, it's a broad interpretation and, um, and a very important one. It's also interesting because there's an, uh, an implicit belief that's expressed through this program that uh, the arts can serve more than just as entertainment or uh, making your life uh, a little more pleasant by what you see around you, uh, that there are other things such as making people feel better yeah. and healthier yeah. as a result of having different kinds of experiences that you can engage in through the arts, whether yeah. painting, I know you do some painting or uh, have done so over, over the course of your life, and, and um, just other people just finding respite, exactly finding it, relaxation, finding a change of venue and, and frame of mind. It's, um, it's a very exciting program for that, for that reason, and I think it's just, it's the first of its kind in the country, in, in, in the country yeah. um, where the state has taken the leadership of, of really opening up cultural arts and, um, and programs to recognizing the, the direct connection between the sense of health and well-being um, of our residents. And if you don't have that access, it, it, you know, it, it takes a large part of that sense of place, that sense of well-being, that sense of connection. And do you find that a lot of the folks who are participating and taking advantage have children in the household? A lot of them do. Yeah. A lot of them do. And uh, as you know, the, the whole issue of really connecting children mm -hmm. to nature, that has a lot of research that right. demonstrates the deep benefit for physical development, cognitive development, uh, social development, um, critical thinking, free play. So um, it's it's definitely in line with the vision of this program mm -hmm. to really. Create this is really big picture thinking. Big picture, and yeah. you you have to get you have to have an open mind to see the value of this and yeah. and to see the contribution this makes in, on so many levels. You mentioned uh, social. Uh, development, well, social equity as well. And social equity. Because absolutely. if you don't have the resources, you're shut out from these experiences. 
And so um, just having the door open for those children and those families is really, really important. And if you get the secondary and tertiary benefits of not only the, the, the leisure and the, and the enrichment, but also the health and exactly being part right. of the community and not being isolated yeah. from the community because you can't afford the, the fee for the admission. So. And breaking down the barriers in this way is, is you know, it, it, people don't have to say, I'm low income and I need help. Yeah. They're already, they've got a car, they, they can it's seamlessly like integrate in into, yeah. right, and they're not identified in yeah. any way. It just, it's, it really is, you know, has deep impact yeah. in that, so you don't have the stigma as well. Right. Great. Well, so let's go back uh, for a few more uh, okay. minutes and, and comments here around the, um, around public art, and I, and I, before I transitioned over, I, I su suggested that this, we have a lot of public art in town already, so we're not starting something brand new in town, we're creating a new policy That's absolutely to right. further advance the opportunities, but tied to public buildings, so. Yeah, Amherst is amazingly rich in our um, art activities, and I don't know whether, if I hold this up, but I think I fed it to you also, there's a brochure online under mm -hmm. the Public Art Commission, but it's also, uh, you can click through the various sites that mm -hmm. we have, and one of the things that I've witnessed with when we open up a new exhibit as a town, and the other th thing about this is it is public, meaning there isn't an entrance fee. Right. <laughs> you right. just go to it, is when this new mural that appears on the back mm -hmm. of one East Pleasant facing the, the graveyard mm -hmm. opened up. There was a whole community. That was the one that was rescued. It was one just rescued. It was, it was on a, a whole building. community gathering. Yeah. So in yeah. addition to everything else you were talking about, it's bringing people out mm -hmm. and and mingling. And you saw conversations start on mm -hmm. who is this. Yeah. And people were sharing stories and then going off to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a cold day and they got cold. So, you know, so it's bringing people if it's this in downtown, mm -hmm. there's a wonderful um, sculpture in Mill River Recreation Area of a mm -hmm. newt. Yeah. Um, there's a salamander over by uh, Cushman, but it's in the corner and it wraps around with rocks and people yeah. go over and discover it. So you have yeah. kids out on the ball field coming over, reading about this mm -hmm. rocky animal. So it, it's very exciting for what it can add to an experience, and I think this sense of community that um, someone else is sharing that with you and you're sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. And most of those pieces of art that we see all around town that already exist were actually paid for uh, mostly by private uh, initiative and private uh, uh, effort. Um, and the public art, though, is a piece of public art that will be paid for by the public as part of the construction of the various buildings that will come along over time. And that's true, and what you'll see on plaques is it'll say donated by, so mm -hmm. it might have been financed with private money, and the Public Art Commission is in a position to take people's donations mm -hmm. also, so it might be if a new park opens up and isn't necessarily part of this pot of right. money, um, someone would say, wouldn't you want to have, and talk about the designers well, it's interesting, the, the very first thing that happened in the opening of Kendrick Park, which has been on the books for a very long time, but finally is now engaged, and it's they this. have yeah. uh, a series of sculptures yeah. on that property, and um, there was no public funds involved in, uh, in those, except perhaps the uh, Amherst Arts Council gets a small amount, amount of state tax money that comes into the town. That's so I should say no local taxes. Right were involved in, in those as, as far as I know at this point. And so this new program would be tied to specific buildings and it would be built into the budget of the creation of those buildings. That's correct. That's correct. And that's why it you know it could it can do something more substantial if we decide to do it, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, as we go forward. Yeah. And interestingly, um, I mentioned that uh, uh, there was a, a taping of a show with our new bid director, Gabriel Gould, and uh, they presented a five-point plan to the town council recently, one of which was the creation of a performing facility okay. venue on the South Common in downtown Amherst. And this has apparently been talked about for many, many years. There have been different versions of this, but none of them ever got 
to the finish line, and it's now part of their vision and their plan. And as I was uh, listening to her describe, this is going to be a performance venue, and it could be any kind of performance from film to music to poetry to uh, to another example she used of was just even a, a, a business um, uh, opportunity where people come to pitch their businesses so instead of doing it in a closed auditorium mm. on a college campus um, the people who are doing that might do it uh, right there on the town common oh, at this venue nice. but I was also thinking at that point when she was talking about this that right behind the South Common um, over the shoulder if you will of that facility is um, a sculpture on the corner uh, of uh, the people reading. Mm -hmm. Are you Absolutely. familiar with that piece yeah. of sculpture? Yeah. And so, you know, that's visual and it's it's right there. It's just very quiet. Right. It's There's not a big deal about it except that when you take a walk or you drive by, it catches your eye. And it's so Amherst. Yeah. People it's our sitting book and outside, our plow. Absolutely. Our book and our plow, our book and our plow. Yep. reading yeah. and um, you know, right there with some big trees around and uh, and then Sweetser Park across the street as well. So it's there's a, a real potential for enlivening the absolutely. downtown. That, that is absolutely, with would absolutely more, be the goal. Yeah. More a, public yeah. art. It's it's important to really know too I, uh, that you know art and culture are economic drivers for absolutely. Yep. cities and towns. They actually really drive a lot more you know business and the more beautiful and more attractive and more appealing and accessible your towns are with art. And you can take walking tours for visitors yeah, who come in right. and they hear, oh, yeah. I hear they have the following. And yeah. Yeah. It's interesting too because we just recently, uh, if, if, if you don't know, we, we recently built a brand new building. A cons considered, it's gorgeous. Uh, the <laughs> One or two all wood net zero constructed con buildings in town. Right, we're the 23rd certified living building in the world. There you go. Which is an exceptional, you know, highest standard for green building. But one of the things that, um, in order to get that certification and requirement, is not only to have high performance standards environmentally, but also they have what they call these different pedals. So you have performance standards for different pedals, energy, water, materials, non-toxic materials, beauty. Hmm. Beauty is one of them. And beauty is, they consider is extremely important to not only for green buildings to actually be beautiful because often high performance buildings aren't, but that beauty in yep. general has an incredible role in again, creating livable cities and and places that um, inspire people and give people a sense of of um, respite, and so I see the arts and you know and this this sort of one or percent of um, uh, half a percent. Half a percent. <laughs> Sorry, gotta say it. half a percent for the arts. The state program these, was a percent. The yeah, towns would be half would be a half a percent. Yeah. And the other thing about the living building too is that that um, it had this whole thing about rights to nature, and so those any living building creates public space that is uh, that's beautiful as part of their own construction to not be exclusive to others. So, if it's people who are using the building who are uh, or who aren't using the building but are have space that they can use, so that it gives that pedestrian sort of. No, and I, and I think that's one of the things we've always, we have been in this century or the last few decades at risk of losing is that community space, that public space public that brings space. people together. Yeah. We often just build over it <laughs> rather yeah. than say, you know, this yeah. is mm -hmm. this is part of the economic center as well as a cultural center yeah. to have a place where people can meet and greet each other right. and want to come to each other rather than stay at home. Mm -hmm. um, in yeah. front of a television set or mm -hmm. whatever yeah. more isolating experience they have. Building community. It's building building community. community through arts and culture. Yeah. And uh, do you think this will be in place uh, in a matter of weeks or months? Well, on February 24th is where the full council, there are 13 members mm -hmm. of the council, so this has gone through two council committees positively. Mm -hmm. If it's voted in, it then goes on the books uh, okay. in terms of a bylaw. And so any new building 
will require. Would have this. What about renovation or restoration of a public structure? Um, if it was major and partly new construction, it's then written, it would it's written okay. sort of a dollar level more mm -hmm. than, you know, it would not include. Um, building a new water for purification plant on mm -hmm. the Enterprise Fund off in Hadley right. in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's thought of, we want it to be publicly accessible, accessible. and mm -hmm. a place that people would want to come to, or that the public is regularly coming in and out of the building the way a school is. Yes. Know, the, mm -hmm. And we will, fortunately, it looks like, <laughs> you know, we're on our path to getting a, to get a, a new, new school. school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, and so this would be in place for the uh, uh, public construction projects that are under consideration right, right now and um, will at what point will artists be engaged in uh, the conversation uh, will it be from the beginning of the planning of the building the goal would be and very early very you know early. so very early as the and building. it's not necessarily the artist is going to create the work yes. but having the art sensibility at the table mm -hmm. as the project is being developed and, and ideally, then, early on, before there's anything like the final design of the building, having the construction managers say, this, these kinds of artwork could work, mm -hmm. and then go out and solicit the proposals, because there's going to be a real effort. And we wrote into the bylaw that in no way would we want the artwork to delay the building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, So if the building is moving along, and suddenly, oh, wait, we didn't get around to choosing the art or the artist isn't ready to do and they can't build without it. We, we don't want that to happen. So mm -hmm. a delay that was related to the art, if it was critical, we could end it. You know, mm -hmm. so, but, yeah. but the idea is to, to integrate it early on. Um, and is there the opportunity to enhance the size of the project by adding private funds or foundation funds if somebody wanted to do that and let's say it's a twenty-five thousand dollars in the budget but uh, somebody says I'd like to match that and you could do a fifty thousand dollar piece of work. You know Stan if you have some donors like that I think the answer is absolutely yes you know the Art Council is set up to take as is the town I mean so if so there are mechanisms to and to if we that. didn't have an earmarked fund right now our controller could set up the uh, percent for art donation fund, you know, so that there you, you would know that if I'm yeah. donating, I'm donating to this. For but the public's exposure is limited to a half a percent, right. uh, and um, and anything above that would would come in another way. And we also, what was important to some of the people on the finance committee, and I think the general counsel, is if we hit a big dip in some way or somehow with this particular building and the timing of it, we had four at once, we could decide on any project to lower the amount or for, for this one not to do it. So it's not a no matter what. Yeah. Um, okay. So it would be a thoughtful process. Well, Kathy Shane, you've had the last word, and we want to thank you and Julie for being uh, here. Well, thank you. Thank you and much. thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again soon.